there is a direct relationship between your mental health and your emotional health and your spiritual health and your physical health. All those are connected together. I think that when you think you can be spiritually healthy and physically unhealthy, you are not really self-aware. We have an arena conference coming up October 11th and 12th. We have an amazing lineup. The biggest benefit I think that we do is bring people together from across the world and create a really unique space to talk about business, talk about politics, spirituality, and how to be a great communicator. One of the things that I think you get when you come to something like the arena are the mental frameworks of people who are highly successful and live at an optimal level. And then you can actually begin to extract the principles and the mental structures that they have. You are listening to the Mind Shift Podcast. My name is Aaron McManus, and I'm here with my dad, Erwin Raphael McManus. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. It's good, good to be here. It's been a few weeks since we filmed. A few things have uh, happened. <laughs> a few things have happened. A lot of things have happened. Yeah, absolutely. We, we haven't filmed, well, I guess we've filmed in London and filmed in New York, but we haven't done like a topical podcast. In a little bit. In a little bit. So yeah, we came back to, to LA. Um, you had a slight mishap. Yeah, what so, happened? Let's yeah, let's yeah. let's talk us through it. But let's you know. No, we won't make that the focus today. But we had we were playing an intense game of. Oh, Adele. what do you mean? You don't want to talk about being injured? <laughs> and uh, as, as I was saying, we were playing uh, an exquisite game of padel, and that's the game. If you don't know, that has glass all around it. If you're listening, and um, my team, my it was up four games to zero against Aaron's team. But then Aaron hit this amazing drop shot that for some reason, even though I was on the back line. I could not just let it go. You couldn't. I had you beat. Too. I've had nightmares about that all week. Going, the, why couldn't I let it go? Yeah. It <laughs> so, a, yeah. so I ran full speed from the yeah. back line, and yeah. remember, full speed at 66 was not the same thing than at 26, but it was still fast. You weren't getting that if you're 26 <laughs> either. That's the thing. You, it, it didn't matter how young you were. You were not getting that shot. So as I'm running full speed toward it, I feel something and hear it pop in my right hamstring, which. Uh propels me forward like the uh, Apollo, you know, <laughs> and spaceship just detonating out into the atmosphere. And I'm about to hit the net with my head, so I want to protect my neck. So I put my left arm down to stop the fall, which caused the elbow to just completely protrude out of the elbow joint. And when I saw my arm, my arm was going in two different directions. <laughs> Yeah. which you saw I and saw others saw others yeah. who were traumatized it was like a, it was like a deleted scene from deadpool your arm was genuinely going in such a different direction that i looked down at you like over the net yeah. i was like okay this is bad because at first i wasn't sure if you were i knew you were like injured but it felt like it was more of a leg injury or an ankle or something and then i looked at your arm and your arm was you know you're you're it was going a completely different direction and it was pretty it was pretty tra traumatizing um, it was <laughs> but he <laughs> we have a lot to talk about we have an arena conference coming up october 11th and 12th and we wanted to talk a little bit about it we have an amazing lineup and i'm very excited this is our second conference that we've done with the arena it's a membership it's a yearly membership mm -hmm. with a weekly call and then these monthly summits that we do as well um, but really the biggest benefit I think that we do is bring people together from across the world and create a really unique space to talk about business, talk mm -hmm. about politics, spirituality, and go deeper into how to be a great communicator. That's the, the, the forefront of what we're building. Yeah, and it's really focused on um, personal development. And, uh, you know, if there's any area in your life that you want to see elevate, if you want to remove the ceiling, whether it's in your personal life or your business life or um, you, you know, it, 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 if you have something you want to see changed in your life, you have to realize nothing grows if you don't grow and everything grows if you grow. And so if, if you focus on personal growth at the deepest level as a leader, as a communicator, as a human being, everything changes. And that's what the arena summit's really all about. Uh, I really loved last year, our, uh, our inaugural one. We had some, uh, great surprises and we had I, I, what comes to mind i think of phil jones i think he was maybe your favorite speaker last year we had some amazing speakers yeah. last year todd herman phil jones i mean jamie lima is fantastic yeah. we had that really special session with jerry lorenzo oh of course that I, was very very special in which i didn't get to ask a single question but i'm not mm -hmm. bitter about it it was it was one of the more like raw and vulnerable moments that i've mm -hmm. ever seen anyone in mm -hmm. that space but yeah. to get it from a guy like jay lorenzo who's obviously you know the founder and owner operator creative director of 
fear of God was really mm-hmm. unique. Um, he was so vulnerable and raw and his grandma had just passed away that week or a few days before. Yeah. And so he had flown down with his whole family, he shows up 30 people deep, I think, with everybody, <laughs> all the siblings and siblings' kids. And it was a really special moment. And so I think that kind of set the tone for what I think this conference and mm-hmm. summit really is, um, is a place where new things will happen. And, you know, this year I think we've done an even better job uh, with programming and mm-hmm. scheduling and mm-hmm. giving the right amount of breaks and space. Yeah. And so we have some of the greatest communicators around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, we have an amazing, amazing communicator yeah. named Brendan Bouchard. And Brendan, I've been texting with him and uh, he's just so excited about coming. And he's, he is the, one of the most energetic human beings I've ever met in my life. When, yeah. and, and he just openly says, I love speaking. I was born for the stage. I love it. You know? And love uh, it. There's, there's no apprehension. He is shameless in that. He, and you know what? He's right. He was born for the platform. He's, he's simply phenomenal. Yeah. And you go and Google him right now, Brendan Bouchard, B-O-U-C-H-A-R-D. Mm-hmm. And he, I mean, he's considered by USA Today like the number one speaker in America. Yeah. So he's high performance, phenomenal. You need to check him out. We have Jamie uh, Kern Lima returning. And we're yeah. kind of, I think it's really unique because with Brendan and with Jamie, we're doing these like hour long sessions mm-hmm. with both of them. So one's on Friday, one's on Saturday. And they're going to kind of do their thing. Mm-hmm. And it's, you, you can't have some of these like massive entrepreneurs and speakers and not just like let them. Yeah. You know, I think that's the thing we learned with like Phil Jones and Todd Herman. What those guys can do in 25, 35 minutes is phenomenal. What yeah. they can do in an hour is even greater. Yeah. So it, we've kind of changed the format. It's really exciting. We have some really special people like Neil Dingra. Yeah, I, I, I love Neil. And uh, I, I met him when he invited. Well, actually, I met him at the 100 Million Mastermind years ago in Florida and got to know him just briefly. Then he invited me to speak at his business event. And I just resonated with him right away. One of the kindest, yeah. um, just enjoyable, really just authentic human being. He was amazing. And so I'm just really excited that he's coming and speaking. And of course, John Gordon's coming back and speaking again this yeah. year. I'm glad he's coming. I, if I had a um, my, my Red Bull session, like the one I'm going, oh, I'm just personally looking forward to it is uh, Jay Glazer. Uh, Jay Glazer. Because, you know, I mean, I, I love ballers with The Rock and our friend Omar, you know, uh, was one of the stars of that show. And Jay Glazer was a significant part of, of that yeah. series. And if you watch any of the sports, you know, networks, he's he's on there. He's always on there. He's just a, a big personality. Yeah. He's just he just fills the room and he's going to speak and i'm so excited I'm very excited about having him and yeah. he has a, a unbreakable gym unbreakable gym which yeah. is probably like the most exclusive gym in yeah. la yeah i think it's five thousand a month or something like ridiculous yeah i'm not a member the, i am looking i'm looking for my complimentary whatever. membership they, they offered you to go um <laughs> they i think it's like where the avengers train and you know yeah. sylvester Stallone. Like they just have an incredible roster of people yeah. that they've really inv- invested in and he has a football background so it's mm-hmm. really cool to kind of see him so I it's mix, a, it's an incredible mix incredible mix we have ali webb we have sean kelly we have some names that you may may be and probably are unfamiliar with and that's mm-hmm. kind of the point of this conference yeah. so d- we're gonna we have a we have a code Mm-hmm. You can use the code. We're going to put the code in the bio, Austin, and it essentially is a family and friends discount. You have one week to get here, and we don't discount ever. But for this, we really wanted to make sure that people who wanted to come last minute, yeah. were, we always kind of leave some room open. Mm-hmm. And, you know, join us here in Hollywood, and it's going to be a very, very exciting conference. Mm-hmm. We have all of, like, the food trucks and everything that come here every meal, so you don't have to leave the campus, which is really yeah. fun. And the thing I've loved about last year is just people are interacting and engaging. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to make this more about the community than it was about having the most people. We talked about opening up a second venue or going to a bigger space, but we really wanted to make sure it was focused around arena members and the people who are, you know, paying to be a part of this amazing community that we're building throughout the year. Yeah, for us, it really isn't an event. It's a community. And it's a community coming together that creates an event. And... That's what is really special is the times that you get to interact together, talk with people. Uh, you watch people go beyond networking to building real relationships. Yeah. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm pretty thrilled to yeah. have this time together. It's to be exciting. Yeah. You also have a new book coming out, or that's just came out in September, but now we're, we're releasing it to the world mm-hmm. October 15th. It's still in its pre-sale. Yeah. 
because which, its official release date is October fifteenth on Amazon. Yeah, which I think and I've unlocked a new strategy with that. You because would, you did, you you. I don't know if you broke the code or created an entire new code. No, I think I think we <laughs> failed completely on deadlines, and that created a new opportunity for us because we knew we needed to hit, you know, a few thousand copies for Global Leadership Summit. That was in August, mm -hmm. and they're the best and amazing. So we kind of had this like soft launch, mm -hmm. you know, and then we launched the assessment with the hardcover. In, in September, mm -hmm. and now we're releasing the audiobook, the digital, the ebook, Amazon pre order, everything, which is like full distribution. There's gonna be in airports, it's gonna be in bookstores. I'm very, very excited for this. So we've accidentally stumbled upon the greatest release of all time because <laughs> I think the book is selling. Yeah. People love it. And the response has been really great. Yeah, I was, I was shocked that the moment we put on Amazon, it jettisoned rapidly up the scale and uh, and it's it's the number one new release and some peculiar some peculiar you know culinary category. communication or yeah. etiquette you know yeah. and, uh, his communication <laughs> etiquette or something but you know what i'll take number one in any category yeah. i don't i don't care it's like anyway you know number one new release in ballroom dancing i mean i'm just I'll gonna take, take it. it i'll take it <laughs> and, uh, um no but i think it's really exciting so so it, it, it's it's cool. It's it's you know. I think in the past we never really made a push to sell on our own, mm -mm. to sell the books on from like your own website. Yeah. You know, it, it's we've always just gone through distributors or like hey you can get it from bookstores or Amazon. We've always pushed Amazon, and so it was really cool to see how many people bought Seven Frequencies just from your website, and from the yeah. new you know the Seven Frequencies dot com website, which mm -hmm. is pretty exciting. So it's it's cool. We had a little bit of issues with the assessment, a little buggy. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of bugs. Yeah. Um, I just saw this thing that... Wait, hold on. I'll talk about it, though. Okay. Okay. So cause here's the thing. So if you've been a part of the assessment and you're like, what the heck are they doing yep. over there? You're a part of the beta. You're a part yes. of the, the R&D, the research and development. And y your, um, your, uh, your um, lack of maybe... Um, or, or your plentiful bugs in your assessment <laughs> will provide a much smoother <laughs> yes. um, uh, entryway for, for everyone who's getting it in the next few weeks. But no, thank you for everyone who's like hung in there, been really patient with us. Um, shout out to our customer service team who has figured it out and made it really awesome. We're just, you know, we're, we're making it more efficient and making it uh easier yeah. for you to get your results yeah the but, first um, five thousand of you are actually pest control you're, you're pest control, <laughs> pest control. no they're, the, they're keep, our greatest people and greatest advocates they are no they're keeping all the bugs out for the future yes they're they're, they're saving all the future yes participants from having the bugs that they had so yes. we're really grateful so to thank you thank you for buying in early <laughs> and if you have any issues email austin at no i'm kidding email info at earl mcmanus.com um but no guys uh yeah so i'm i'm, I'm excited so we're gonna go over some yeah. of the seven frequencies stuff we're definitely doing a mind shift podcast at the conference mm -hmm. and yeah yeah, we're doing some, even some special sessions. You know, I, I've done some, I've done a lot of experimental medicine and not, I'm not talking about like mushrooms, I'm talking about um, all the advanced technologies and approaches toward medicine. I've tried to stay on the cutting edge from the very, very beginning. Yes. And e even when everybody, now everybody does the cold plunges and the uh, cryo, but I was doing that cryo 20 something years ago yeah. when there was only just like two or three places in the world. And, um, and so I've always liked things on the front edge and we're, I'm having a couple of friends come in from Costa Rica and we're going to be talking about some of the cutting edge. They're part of RMI, yeah. which is Research Medical Institute. Yeah, and they focus on the cutting edge um, cell re um, engage, uh, enhancements to help you retain your youth, to reclaim your energy, get back your strength. And, you know, I'm 66 and uh, I just want to keep redefining what my age looks like. And at 70, I want to have the, the vigor and youthfulness and agility and ability of a 35-year-old. And I just think it's really important uh, to try to optimize your life in every arena. Hmm. And there is a direct relationship between your mental health and your emotional health and your spiritual health and your physical health. All those are connected together. Hmm. I think that when you think you can be spiritually healthy and physically unhealthy, you are not really self-aware. You cannot be spiritually healthy and mentally unhealthy hmm. or um, physically unhealthy. It all connects together and it all affects one another. 
And I think it's really important. And so I'm excited about having a session talking about just even like physical health and physical longevity. Yeah, it's, I'm the most skeptical when you go to these retreats. All I tell you is just like, don't die. Don't put anything in your body that I wouldn't put in my body. And, you know, and but it, and from, I think, the outside looking in, when I first heard about RMI, I was like, what are these kooks doing over here? <laughs> and then looking at the information online, I mean, one of their websites, incredible and, and, mm -hmm. and like the type of medicine that they're doing and the, mm -hmm. the new research and, and everything from like bone density to to stem cell research yeah. to like just really unique cosmetic things or, you know, bone enhancement, how to, you know, longevity of plasma extraction. Mm -hmm. Like there's some <laughs> really unique things. So if, if you're yeah. skeptical, you should buy in more and, and check it out and, and, <laughs> and go come to the arena and go to the, the arena. Be having that conversation and it's they're going to be, be there session. for the whole two days to have yeah. any conversations that people yeah. want to have about their own personal health and well-being. Patrick and Dara? And uh, Dana. Dana, Dana, Dana. Yeah. I haven't met Dana, but I've met She Patrick. is a, a, a powerful, yeah, Dana incredible, she's really, really, really brilliant team of bang. Head of ops. And I think she's the CEO. CEO, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and so they're, Patrick and Dana are both coming. I've done it for a couple of years. They've been incredibly helpful in my own life. And I, you know me, I get injured all the time. But so it, you know, it, <laughs> so, you're, so the day of your injury was really interesting because you're laying there on the floor and we're playing with like a new friend, Ellie, mm -hmm. who, you know, owned, owns One Oak, uh, the old nightclub world. <laughs> and, you know, he's an older, like, uh, Jewish guy. Not older. What is he, like, 40s? Yeah, 40, yeah. Me. A little younger than you. And he's like, you know, trying to help you, getting ice. And he's just being the most wonderful person. And we've just met this guy. And I'm sitting there being like, yeah, we're going to be okay. I think the first thing came out of my mouth was, I didn't even want to play today. This is what happens when you play when you're tired. And, you know, we had just come off an 18-day 18, 18 work trip. Yeah, it is what happens does, when you're playing your tire. Yes. I'm going to We did that. an event Saturday morning for five yeah. hours, then did, then did Mosaic for another eight hours on Sunday. And I told you, all I needed was a Monday away. Yeah. And you're like, no, 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 I rented the, 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 the Padella courts. But here's the thing. Um, <laughs> well, I'm so used to getting injured, you getting injured, that, like, it didn't even phase me. Like, I'm looking at my dad, his arm just... Tw you could the bone could have been sticking out. I would have responded the same way. I'm so used to this. And at one point, he looked at me and was like, "You're very calm." And I was like, "It just happens a lot." That's the guy in the ambulance who said it to you. No, Ellie said it to oh, me. Oh, was Ellie? Oh, okay, He's like, okay. You're very calm about this. And I was like, "It's just he gets injured a lot. I'm pretty used to it. There's no blood. That's nice, you know." Now you have to you have to admit when you saw my arm going in two directions and the bone shaping around the skin, it did it did have a significant effect on you no i wouldn't say significant no, no. I, I think in the i think afterwards it was like wow i like I, you know it, it's just the realization of 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 a couple other things john gordon had nightmares john gordon was unwell <laughs> and i told you i was like dude this is like a normal this happens once a quarter with you you know since i was a kid so it's not a new thing i'm just glad you're feeling better now and your arms getting less swollen that you're probably gonna are you gonna have to have surgery um time will tell but what does um, that mean? Time will tell. No, the doctors will tell. <laughs> the surgeon. Which, basically, what do you mean? I, I have a I have a complete tear. Who's time? I have I do have a complete tear yeah. and it would need Tommy John surgery, but I'm gonna try to rehab all the torn ligaments and tendons around it to see if I can go without the surgery and still okay. regain all my uh, necessary functions for playing basketball, lifting weights, and playing padel <laughs> and all those things. And um, uh, because you know, I just wanna like I went to the surgeon this morning and I said. I, I want to make sure I can play everything and still live a crazy, insane life. So yeah. you know, let, let's get me back there. I do think the punishment for stupid decisions is called physical therapy. <laughs> and, uh, like, so if, if you feel like I need to be psychologically punished for my stupid decision, believe me, the amount of pain I'm in 10 days later and the pain I'm gonna have to go through for um, rehab is gonna be so intense that, um, that it, it will be a great learning model. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I d one, I'm praying for your speedy recovery. And Thank so, you. You know, if you're out there and you believe in prayer, please join me in praying with him, praying for him. But also pray for his mind. I want to pray for your brain because something in your head doesn't have, you don't have the thing that is just like, I'm not, I don't need to die for that ball. You don't have that thing, which makes you wonderful. And I think it's, it was a clear distinction of why we're so different. Because I wouldn't have died, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have like dove in for, dove in? I wouldn't have I don't dived. even know. Dived? Dove? No. I wouldn't have dove. I have no intellectuals around me to help me here. <laughs> That's offensive. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I have athletes. <laughs> I would not have done what you did. 
<laughs> and at one point, like, <laughs> you said something. And I've never really, I've seen you in a lot of pain, momentary mm-hmm. pain. I haven't seen you where you were like, hey, I'm actually in so much pain. I, I need, like, a painkiller. Like, mm-hmm. I need help. And you, it, was, it was a surprising moment. It was a great father-son moment. And, and you know, I, I had a moment where I got emotional because it was more just, it's more like I, I can't. I can't, you know, how to train your dragon. It's like how to train your father. I can't do it. There's nothing I can do. It doesn't matter how many sequels we get. You're still going to do whatever you want. I just have to choose to opt in or not. And I, I'm glad I was there because if I wasn't, I wasn't going to come. I was, you know, I wasn't going to come. And I'm glad I'm there because then I could take care of you, you know. Um, well, but I, you did apologize. So I just wanted to, like, state that for the people who wonder, like, does he normally put me through this much trauma and then doesn't apologize? He, you did. You apologized. Right away I was apologizing. I said, Not I'm sorry right to mess away. everybody's day. No, I said, hey, I'm so sorry for messing up everybody's day while I'm laying there. Well, I, yeah, yeah. You yeah, called yeah. me afterwards and said, hey, you know, I, I know I got to, like, slow down a little bit. You, you know, I, I've been trying to reflect on that. I, I don't have that, whatever that brain... Um, glitch or click or lock it i don't have it the it, off switch that yeah the i'm dimmer yeah i i don't i don't have whatever second third gear is you huh. know and i have off and and all on yeah but i i do think that it's important because as we we're talking about the arena summit one of the things that i think you get when you come to something like the arena yeah are the are the mental frameworks of people who are highly successful and live at an optimal level. And, and they don't always live there in every arena. So you, you don't necessarily want to take a person as a model for every aspect of your life, but you do want to pay attention to where that person has developed their expertise or their genius yeah. or their greatness. And then you can actually begin to extract the principles and the, the mental structures that they have. And, you know, and so there's there's something in my head over the last two weeks even going, all right, what do I need to develop in my brain that lets me know it's not worth it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, don't run for that. Just let it go. Mm-hmm. Um, because clearly, if I could have had that, I would have wanted it. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you know, and um, but there's also also like other mental muscles. Like I remember laying there on the ground in agonizing pain, looking at John Gordon. And the first thing I said that I can remember it to him was, tell Justin, call Justin and tell him I can't make it tomorrow. And, or that I won't, I, I'm most likely can't make it tomorrow. And he said he thought I was delirious because he didn't know who Justin was, but I knew he had a friend named Justin and he didn't know I was going to speak at his event in, in Mexico the next day. Mm-hmm. And so the first thing that came to my mind was what are the responsibilities that I, won't, I will not be able to, to keep? Mm-hmm. Or commitments I, I, I cannot yeah. keep because and I, and I think that one of the, like the positive mental structures okay my whatever my stupidity structure is that made me run for that ball and just okay my elbow I don't want anyone to replicate that right you, you know but the other part the instantaneous response to going I've made a commitment and I need to make sure they know that I might not be able to keep it hmm. I do think that's one of the mental structures that has given me success in my life Hmm. that I have this incredibly high commitment to keeping my word. Hmm. And, um, and then when I called Justin, he was a professional hockey player, so he understood injuries. And I ended up zooming in two sessions of two, two and a half hours uh, to the event, which actually worked incredibly well. Yeah. And, and I, don't, I can't even believe I'm zooming in like two days after having this severe yeah, of an injury. You're a psychopath. It, your injury and, happened on Monday. Yeah. And then we did the arena on Tuesday. On Tuesday, which I almost yeah. have no memory of. I actually don't and, have memory of it either, which is yeah. very bizarre. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I think sometimes people think, why does someone else succeed or why does someone else achieve? Or, or if you put it in the spiritual space, why does God bless that person and not me? Mm. And I actually think God blesses people who keep their word. Like God blesses people who keep their commitments. God blesses people who don't allow excuses to give them an easy way out. And um, I had an easy way out all week. I didn't have to do the arena, you know, call last Tuesday. I didn't have to do the five hours of Zooming for this event uh, for just, you know, 10 couples. It wasn't a massively large event. It was 10 couples. But I gave my word and made that commitment. Yeah. And, and I feel such a deep sense of satisfaction that I was, I found a way to keep my commitments. Yeah. And, and I've known a lot of people in my life and I watch them break their commitments as if they're nothing 
or change your plans at the last minute as if it doesn't matter how it affects other people or um, or give their word and later on just go back on it and and I can tell you there's a direct relationship to the progress they make in their life and the commitments that they keep yeah. and break no I get it yeah. I only commit to hang out with people who let me cancel because I, <laughs> I am that person. I don't, I don't want to, if, if the day of I get in, anxious about spending time, I want to be able to go home, like, you, you know, and, yeah. and do my own thing. I, I come from a different breed and not as strong, um, but um, still expensive. Um, I'm kidding. No, no, but I, I get what you're saying. And, and, and that's something you've always like kind of hit it home with us is like, hey, if you've committed to showing up, show up. Mm -hmm. you know as best you can even if you yeah. can't show up for long mm -hmm. like it's more yeah. important to show up than to to break your word you know yeah or, or make a call and ask out yeah but don't don't treat it as if it's it's meaningless you, yeah you, you know yeah and uh and uh and, and if i could just flip it to a large scale i do think it's why if you're listening uh, you can get here next week on october 11th or 12th friday and saturday to los angeles california you should come to the arena summit because it, so many times we act frustrated about where our life is at or we act confused about why we're not making the progress we need to make but we're not making the investment in ourselves to grow to deepen and to develop and if you have a deep commitment a personal commitment to be the full expression of who god created you to be um, you need to get in spaces that help move you in that direction hmm. And, and for me, the Arena Summit is one of the singular best personal development experiences in the world. So let's let's bring this up because, yeah. you know, it's always interesting. I, I Whenever there's a new book or a new thing, we always get a lot of hate. Who do we get hate from? It's always the Christians. Yes. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what happened to all of you, but you guys need to work on this. Except the ones listening to us usually like us. Usually like us. Yeah usually yeah most of the time it's yeah. always interesting it's always the people who have like f not paid attention to you for a while mm -hmm. and then have woken up being like oh wait he's in business now oh wait let me hate him oh wait he said something about god again i thought he was in business mm -hmm. you know and so it, it is this it, it is interesting like it makes sense why people miss the works and acts of god in their life yeah because they can't identify they only know how to identify jesus and god and faith in a specific box mm-hmm but the moment it moves beyond that box, it's never mm -hmm. actually in that box. We just try to put it in a box to yeah. help us understand it and explain it. But the moment that, you know, so it's like for you is like the moment your calling moves beyond just speaking on a Sunday, people have a hard time with it. Yeah. People have a hard time what makes them feel uncomfortable. So a lot of people have been calling you a heretic lately. And, and I yeah. called you and I was like, hey, I don't know if I want to keep doing mind shift at Mosaic events because <laughs> they're my least favorite audience. Not Mosaic people or our, or our audience, but the, the, whenever it, it's correlated to anything spiritual, it, it becomes this whole thing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I literally a pastor DM'd me uh, this past week saying, um, I was quoting, I, I was reading Seven Frequencies and I posted something on it and an old member, one of the churches I passed in the past, reached out to me to tell me, don't listen to Irving McManus, he's a t heretic, he's dangerous, you shouldn't let him influence you. So and I don't dangerous. know why he's telling the me this. The only danger you are is to yourself. Yeah, I can't but then, keep you. But then he said, hey, I just want you to know I love you, just keep doing what you're doing. I'm going, I don't, I, one, it doesn't help me to know that people are calling yeah, people to say, don't listen. We suck. But, um, it, you know, the way I, I, I think about it now is, if everyone likes you, no one respects you because you're not saying or doing anything that challenges people's thinking. Yeah. And I mean, everybody likes like Labradors, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and, but they respect pit bulls <laughs> and, and, uh, and Dobermans. And I think there's some kind of dynamic. It was actually Spurgeon. I think I sent you a quote. He's one of the greatest yeah, preachers in Spurgeon. modern yeah. time who actually talks about how, um, like individuals who make a difference in the world are rarely are often seen as unkind mm -hmm. and um, I don't think I'm seen as unkind I actually think I'm seen as strangely controversial but I think a part of it is that people want to put you in a box and when you step out of that box it for some reason confuses their world like see I'm not confused that I love Jesus and I 
love being in the business world yeah. and that I love writing books and that I love working with you designing clothes and I love being the leader of Mosaic. Like all those things, they all fit because they're an extension of me. Mm. They just don't fit other people. I, I, no. I, I was in a workout this week and I went with one of my good friends and they, they introduced us to another friend. They were like, oh, my, you know, they introduced us to this, introduced me to this girl and, and she goes, oh, you gotta meet her. She goes to church too. And she's like, oh, do you ever go to Mosaic? And she goes, no, Mosaic's an effing cult. And I just- And that's just what like, the Christian said to the non-Christian. That's what the Christian said to the, yeah. And I just laughed. And, she, and my friend looked back at me and was like, sorry. And I was like, hey, my name's Aaron. You know, I was like, yeah, did, did, you, grow, did you grow up Catholic? Usually when they call us a cult, it's usually Catholics. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, did you grow up Catholic? She's like, yes. How'd you know? And I was like, ah, because only Catholics deem every other religion a cult for the most part in the Western world. Anyways, I was like, oh, have you been? She's like, yeah, it just, she said the little Puerto Rican guy gave me um, anxiety. And I was like, okay, that, he gives me anxiety too. Sometimes I get it. And I, I just said, did you give it a chance? Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't know. And so then I just started listening to like just mm -hmm. her perspective. And you know, and I was like, I think when you humanize it, cause I was like, oh, that guy gives you anxiety. That's my friend, Carlos. He's the best. He's amazing. Best dad, father, leader I know. Mm -hmm. You know, that, the word, oh, you didn't like the worship? Oh, cause it didn't sing songs you knew. Like, mm -hmm. so it, when you get down to the granular, yeah. the, the cult thing, the heretic thing doesn't really stand up. It's just easier to go, it's easier to call Trump a fascist and to call Harris a, a, a socialist. She is, but you know. Um, <laughs> it's easier to label people than to actually learn about people and, and, and have an understanding. Yeah. Um, so I, I, well, I did call you and I said, they're calling you a heretic again. It means, it means all those weird people <laughs> that we don't actually reach normally with our marketing. We're actually reaching them. Yeah. And this is a good thing because yeah. we want to reach people we don't normally reach. Yeah. And if they think we're a heretic, that's okay. That's, that's one more person. We just have to, you know, convince or, <laughs> or market to, or help them understand. Um, or get rid of, you know, maybe we alienate them and, and they never come back. But mm -hmm. I think if you read the books, dive into the messages, listen to the talks. And we did have this conversation. You have mm -hmm. a theological conversation on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's it's theoretics in, in some ways. Theoretical, yeah. Theoretical, not heretical. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> But a lot of people who speak in Sundays teach doctrine. Yeah. They reinforce doctrine. So yes. the things you already believe about the scriptures yeah. or the way that you need to look at the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You tend to look at it from a, a theory, theological perspective of what could exist within the words of Jesus. Mm -hmm. What does exist that we're not talking about. Um, so that's something that I find really interesting. So what I'm excited about Arena is it's separate. Mm -hmm. But then there's a lot of people who do believe and a lot of people who don't. And this is the perfect place to bring people into like this kind of first, second space. Um, of a business conference. Yeah, and that's where there's, I do like the arena space is that a lot of my friends who do believe in Jesus yeah. have friends who don't believe in Jesus, but they work together in the business world. And they're not quite ready to bring them to church, but they can bring them to an event like the arena, have this incredible life-changing experience, connect with people who do have faith, but actually are really good in the business world. Yeah, They have respect for them because of what they've accomplished. Yeah. And then they go, oh, and they have faith too. Yeah, and that adds a lot of power to it. I think so. You know, and not all of our speakers have have a faith. No, and I don't know which ones do. I yeah, know one of them. And That's I don't it. make that the criteria. I but I do make uh, a criteria that I actually know them. <laughs> yes. And yes. that I have a, a friendship with them, a relationship with yeah. them. And, uh, and that for me has been the filter that I've used along the way. And I think it's, it's the, the, the summit is much more relational mm -hmm. than it is, like I think marketable in a way. Uh, yeah, it's, it's much more, it's yeah, relational. And um, it isn't, I, I know what the word you're, you're thinking in terms of marketable, we don't pick them for- Who's gonna sell the most tickets. Yeah, who's gonna sell tickets for us. No. We picked them based on, we got to know this person. We yeah. got to meet this person. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, it, was, it was somehow cross paths and, and let's, yeah. let's stay in relationship with them. We want, the, we want the, the people who are willing to drop everything in a week and hear the call and come. Yeah. So yeah, so we're very excited. The code is MindShift. Uh, there's gonna be a link to, what's the, what's the website? arenasummit.com thearenasummit.com use the code MINDSHIFT to get a 50% off discount to this ticket essentially it's the same price as it was last year yeah. um, and 
for everyone who paid full price, we have something special for you. Mm-hmm. It's very exciting. And it's going to be a really fun time. It's going to be a lot of space and room for people to connect and grow and develop their communication skills. So mm-hmm. I'm very, very, very excited. Sign up, register today. Stay in and around Hollywood. We're on the corner of Hollywood Boulevard and the Brea. Cannot wait. And we're very excited. The arena summit.com. We'll see you guys Friday we'll see morning. You guys Friday morning. Stay for the weekend. Stay for Sunday. Stay for Sunday if you've never visited. Guys, we love you. We're so grateful for you listening to the podcast. I, I'm really heated on what's going on in Israel and and Lebanon, so I want to talk about that at some point. Okay. Um, I've been getting some 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 um, interesting criticism from some of my posts, but you know it's not going to change it. Always open to conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, looking forward to our next episode. And right. I guess I'll see you next week at the arena. All right. See you at the arena. Hey All guys, right. can't wait to see you guys. All right. Bye. Bye bye.